Okay, so let's see uh, the, our third topic, uh, which is accrual accounting and income. Now, there are two ways that we can record our uh, uh, business transactions. One is uh, on cash basis, and the other one is on accrual basis. Accrual accounting is that we have to record the transaction whenever it happens. We not wait when we collect the cash or when we pay the cash. We record the transaction immediately when it happened. We are not waiting for the collection or the payment of cash. So this is what we call it as an accrual accounting. Cash basis accounting is an accounting in which we only record the things when the cash is paid or when the cash is collected. So that's a major difference between accrual accounting and income account. So in this chapter, we're going to talk about this. And especially in the first part, we are going, uh, explaining how accrual accounting differ from the cash basis accounting and apply the revenue and expense recognition principle. So these are the two things we're going to talk about it. So as I mentioned that uh, accrual accounted versus cash basis accounting uh, record impact of transaction when they occur. We just Im immediately rec our, uh, record our transactions. Requires under IFRS and ASPE. So under International Financial Reporting Standard as well as Accounting Standard for Private Enterprises. So these are the two standards we follow in, in, in most of the countries in Canada as well. Uh, why these are the two standards? Because those firms who are operating globally or in different countries so they have to follow international financial uh, reporting standards or if it is a public limited company they have to follow international financial reporting standards uh, if it is a private company and not operating globally within the country they are operating in that case they can follow accounting standard for private enterprises but still they have to uh, in both the cases they have to follow an uh, accrual accounting system, not the cash basis. So revenue when earned and expenses when incurred. So they have to, this is the crux of the accrual. So we recognize the revenue when it is earned. We don't wait that when we collect the money, we just recognize when it is earned. For expenses, we also recognize the expenses when it is incurred. We don't wait that when we will pay, we will record, no. So on the, on the other hand, the cash base accounting, uh, records only cash transactions, cash receipts, cash payments. So that's a very simple. And because of the simplicity of this system, it is not going to work for a large corporation. It is it is only going to work for a very small scale businesses. Ignore important information, results is incomplete because, you know, <clears throat> if it is a, a, a corporation, then uh, the tax authorities is going to uh, calculate the, uh, the real income of the uh, corporation and then they have to tax it. Uh, but if it is a, it's a sole proprietorship or a partnership at a very small level, so they don't need to calculate their income because their their the owner's income is going to be taxed, not the uh, entity's income. So for that reason, cash basis can work there. But for a uh, corporations, that's not going to work. Uh, ignore important information and results in an incomplete financial statement and only used by the smallest type of businesses. So this is the way that it works for cash. Now record both cash and non-cash transactions. So some are cash transactions, some are non-cash transactions, but in accrual accounting system, we record both the cash and non-cash uh, transactions. Now what are the cash uh, transactions and what are non-cash transactions? There are certain transactions in which we uh, receive, either receive or make payment uh, that uh, uh, using the cash. Uh, so it means that either uh, a transaction in which either the debit, we debit the cash or the credit the cash. So one of the account is uh, that is going to hit or affect with the transaction is cash. So that transaction is called as a cash transaction. Any other transaction in which neither uh, a debit or a credit is uh, affecting the cash, these are called as a non-cash transactions like collecting payment from customers. So cash received, accounts receivable, credit, uh, cash debit, accounts receivable credit, right? So one of the account is cash, which is debit. Uh, receive interest earned, so cash debit, interest in revenue credit. Borrowing income, cash debit, loans or uh, liabilities credit. Uh, paying expenses, expenses debit, cash credit. 
paying off loans, loans debit, cash credit, issuing stocks, cash debit, shareholders equity or a common stock uh, credit. So by this way, you see that there is a, always a one of the account is always a cash account. But for a non-transaction, uh, non-cash transactions, uh, sales on account. So what entry we're gonna pass? Accounts receivable debit, sales credit. So there is no cash. Purchase on account, purchases debit, accounts payable credit. Accrual of expense not yet paid. So rent expense debit, expense payable, rent payable credit, uh, expense, rent expense debit, and rent payable credit. Salaries expense debit, salaries payable credit. So there is no cash involved. Depreciation expense, uh, depreciation expense debit, accumulated depreciation credit. So by this way, there is no cash involved. Usage of prepaid expenses, like we have a, a, a prepaid rent, so what we do? When we rent expense debit, prepaid rent credit. Uh, earning of a revenue when cash was collected in advance. So what we have to do? So it's a, what we do? Uh, revenue uh, is always credit, so what we do? Uh, accrued income debit, revenue services, revenue or uh, uh, whatever the revenue we can credit. So this is the way that uh, it works. Accounting information, uh, now the time period. Uh, accounting information, as we discuss in our uh, first chapter as well, like income statement is a flow concept. So there is certain a period for which we are preparing. Uh, statement of retained earning has the same. Statement of cash flow has the same. Only the balance sheet is a different one. That has an, on that particular period. So it means that accounting information is reported for a certain period. And they, those periods are very uh, regular intervals. Like if a corporation is providing information, accounting information on quarterly basis, so they are going to continue for a quarterly basis, half yearly or uh, yearly. So that's a... Now, there is a concept in accounting period is that it's different uh, than the calendar year. Calendar year is starting always from January 1st and ending on December 31st. This is what we call it as a uh, calendar year. But accounting or a fiscal year for any business can be different, but it should be of a 12 months. It is possible for a businesses and some businesses do as well. Like their financial period is starting from April 1st and ending on 31st March. Uh, there are many firms who are operating like this that their uh, financial period or uh, fiscal period is starting on July 1st and ending on 30th June. So we can see that the 12 months period uh, can be any, but normally it happens that the businesses adopt a one certain time, uh, a certain period as their fiscal year and they continue it. They, it's not uh, that every time you change it, uh, it's not a good practice. So it's a practice that they adopted certain uh, like and and it depends on the nature of the business as well. Like if the uh, if there is a seasonal effect uh, that is going, through. so they try to uh, use a fiscal year, which is uh, so it's it can be uh, the firms can adopt any fiscal year, uh, starting month and ending month, and the period should be of a twelve uh, months. So that's good. now there is a revenue principle uh, in general that we have a principle that when uh, when we have to record the revenue. So when to record, after revenue is earned, when goods or services has been delivered to the customer, uh, it is not gonna be recorded on the time when you receive the cash, but it is gonna re record on the time when you delivered the goods and services to the uh, customer. Amount, the cash value of the goods or services transferred to the customer. So that's going to be the, this is what we call it as a revenue principle. Expense recognition principle also says that when you have to recognize the expense, identify expenses incurred, measure the expense for that particular period, accounting period, and recognize along with related revenue. So this is very important and this is what we call it as a matching principle. Uh, the third one, this one, matching principle. Matching principle means that we should try our best that the revenue of a certain period match with the expenses of that period. It is not allowed that you take the revenue of any other period and add up in this period and the expenses of that period was charged for the previous period or for the future period. So like uh, if you, uh, the, uh, the corporation is following a 
fiscal year like from January 1st to 31st December. So all the revenues which are going to generate it during that period from January 1st to December 31st should be added as the revenue whether received or not. That's not the point. The only that is going to be earned revenue and we try our best that the expenses of that period should be matched with that. Like all the expenses incurred from January 1st to December 31st. Should. So this is what we call it as a matching principle that we have to match the revenues and expenses. So this is the first part we want to discuss uh, uh, with you guys uh, regarding these uh, fundamentals. Uh, in the second uh, part, we're going to talk about the uh, accrual entries like that entries, which is are important to no.